Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you for choosing to spend a little time with us during our Sunday morning worship experience. And I pray that you will receive something that will help you on your journey in the future. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, our prayer to you today is that you will fortify our understanding of holiness so that we can be the people that you've called us to be for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, today we're going to talk about a call to holiness. In other words, God called Abraham to a life separate from the rest of the world. He called him out of from among his kindreds. And then through Abraham, the father of faith, God called Israel out of the world. We are, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. We should not allow the world to be in us, but we should allow the Holy Spirit to be in us and what's in us will ultimately come out. Uh, you might recall that we've been uh, studying... Uh, uh, doing sermons uh, for some months now under the umbrella of show me me. Lord, show me the real me that I deny, that I don't want to see when I look in the mirror, that other people see uh, but still don't see the real me. Nobody sees the real me but you, Lord, so you show me me. And uh, we went through uh, the first six chapters of uh, Isaiah, and and that was uh, "Woe is me." That that was the heading of all, all of those sermons. And then now we're in the New Testament, uh, dealing with uh, Paul's statement to God: "O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of sin?" Uh, I thank God through. Jesus Christ, and he's the only one that can deliver us from the sin that is so evasive in our lives, but still we are not aware of it. And we've adapted a attitude that uh, even though it might be there, we don't see it. So it's important that God, who is the only one that can do it, show us the real us. Show me me. And we've been talking the last few weeks about holiness, and today we're going to continue with holiness. God calls us to holiness, our call to holiness. That's important. Now, our focus verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. And this is from the New International Version. It reads, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ. Jesus and called to be holy together with all those everywhere who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and our Lord. That's the word of God that we'll be working with today. And the, again, the main focus is on uh, a call to holiness a call to holiness, not a call to be holy. Not that that's not important, but we are, it, it, we have, God has called us to holiness. And, and, and when he calls us, that's a statement from him. And God just speaks and things happen. Maybe that putting it that way will help us. But let's walk through, through the uh, uh, lesson uh, or sermon for this week. It's important that we think of our call to be holy is more than being what God called us to be. And its foundation is found in the one who called us and his authority to make us just what he called us to be. In view of the general parallelism between Israel and the church as it was uh, in the early times of the New Testament and as it is today, it is not unexpected that the New Testament children of God should be considered holy by virtue of their position. Position is important. This 
is fundamental to any consideration of our condition. We must, before we consider our condition or what we can become, we must be consider what we are, what we have been positioned to be. It may appear uh, to anyone who examines 1 Corinthians as contradictory that Paul should address his readers as saints or holy ones, whereas much of what he says about them in the body of the lesson seems to contradict his characterization of them. The apparent contradiction is enhanced by the translations uh, that suggest a future frame of reference for holiness by inserting the word two words to be between call and saint or holiness as though the holiness is only a future hoped for reality called to be holy. But such a translation misses the point that Paul is stressing that these people are holy by virtue of their call. And we are holy by virtue of our call. In other words, at the point we are called, it is then that we are to be saints. We are set apart uh, or holy. Uh, and and it's, it starts then. Emphasis should be placed on that point and then look at future uh, references to it. It's a matter of position in relationship to God rather than a condition. It, it's not something that uh, is not that we are not something that we are to work to become, but what we become when we are called. And then after that, we work at becoming because we are already holy. So we work at becoming what we are. It's kind of like uh, uh, we are we're saved, but still we are working out our salvation. We're working at becoming what we are. We are saved, but uh, let's see, how can I put it? But, uh, uh, but, but, but God, we are saved and now we, we are working at becoming what we are uh, by virtue of, uh, it, it's kind of like when I was born, I was born a Jackson. But the more I grew, the more of a Jackson I became. Uh, when we don't know and have no understanding of who we are or what we are, it is re as it relates to the word of God, then we don't know uh, what, what we don't know can be used against us. In other words, we could end up thinking that when we get to heaven, that there will be an area that won't be for us as a people and that there will be division between the haves and the have nots there as it is here. But the, that we, we could end up thinking that the haves will come down to where we are to hear us sing songs of praise. We as a people have been among the haves, have nots, so long that we fail to understand that when we are called, it is at that time that the call that we become among those numbered as God's children. When we are saved, when we are called, we, we by virtue of what Jesus did for us on Calvary, we become children of God. And it's at that time that we become heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So it's important that we know what we are. We, we don't need to walk around uh, uh, allowing somebody because of a mistake that we made determining that we are not holy. Our position, God has positioned us in holiness. Uh, in keeping with this idea, the preceding statement about these believers 
that they are sanctified in Christ can only bring confusion if it is taken as a description of their current state. Since this is not confirmed by the content of the letter, clearly they are being described as set apart to God in Christ. And once more, in the same letter, the Apostle Paul uses the term sanctified in a way that removes it from any possible human activity. He states that the Corinthian believers are washed or sanctified and justified in 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. And this was done, he states, in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Clearly, this does not mean that the Corinthians were made holy in character. The term sanctified placed as it is before justified can only mean a positional holiness. Something that was granted simultaneously with justification, but given prior mention because of the context. Allow the Holy Spirit to to, to really make that make sense to you. That's one of the reasons that justification and sanctification and glorification can be difficult to understand. And it appears that everything happens at once while there is a progression that takes place. We are positioned in holiness and then that holy state is a progressive state. We are positioned and then our character is changed. We are transformed by the renewing of our mind. It appears that everything has taken place at once while it is a progression that takes place. I look at it this way in my simple mind. I'm sanctified now, but not yet. Because I am being sanctified also. I, am, uh, I will, from the time I put my hope in Jesus Christ to the time he returns, I will be in a process of being sanctified, even though I have been set apart already for God. I'm not yet, but I am. The process has started, but not yet completed. It's like this. When a builder begins to build a house or some other structure, he starts with the foundation. And the building of the house has begun, but is not yet completed. It helps in this connection to consider Paul's description of himself in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. He's not saying that people call him an apostle but rather that he is an apostle by virtue of being summoned or called by God to this responsibility. He's not all that he's going to be yet, but he's reaching towards the mark of a higher calling. It's a matter of progression, position and progression. The position of his readers as saints is parallel to his position as apostle. For example, both relationships de de depend on the divine calling and not them. And our position as holy does not depend on us, but it depends on the divine calling of God. Issues concerning character or conduct at this point are irrelevant. Now, that's not to say or suggest or remind us that uh, conduct and character are important in the overall consideration of holiness. But the character part, the conduct part, is where the progression takes place. We are called to holiness and we, we God the Holy Spirit works at making us what we are in essence 
but it's a habit of the New Testament writers to base their appeal for holiness of life upon their readers called their choice by a holy God. Peter's approach is typical as he who is called, he says, is holy. Be ye holy yourselves in all your conduct. That's first Peter one and 15. That call is closely connected with the call choice of his election. God called us to holiness by positioning us. We and we are becoming holy in character. First John chapter three, verse two says, beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he, speaking of Jesus, appears in his second coming, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. First John chapter four, verse 17 through 21. And this is the New American Standard Version that I'm going to read for you. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 through 21 reads, By this, love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him that 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 the one who loves God should love his brother also. And as we, uh, just as Job, have to do, we have to wait until our change comes or is completed. We have to go through some things. We have to make some choices. We have to, we, we will make some good choices, some bad choices, but we're ultimately waiting until our change come. At the moment of twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed from corruptible to incorruptible, from mortal to immortal. We will be changed. And our waiting is fortified by what Jesus did for us on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. He died as a, in, a, in a sinner's death so that sinners could become the righteousness of God. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. And early the third day morning, he rose with all power in his hand. And that's why my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And then the fourth stanza says, when he shall come with trump sound, trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, clothed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand, sinking sand. We are called to holiness. It's a positional calling that we, we, are, we are positioned in God's family right now, but we're still pressing towards the mark of a higher calling. That's it for today. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, who has called us and sanctified us, in whom we trust 
to keep us as we wait for the return of your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to be who and what you've called us to be. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you again for spending a little time viewing our YouTube uh, Sunday morning uh, worship experience for today, 10-3-2020. Uh, uh, I pray that God will give the increase and each of you will be blessed by his word as he works to show us who we really are. And then we are more inclined to call out to him for help. Remember, uh, and, and I believe now you, you'll take me more serious. Uh, remember to pray for our president and uh and, and I think it would be to our advantage to as, as especially as Democrats to pray for all Republicans. And it's hard to hate somebody you're praying for. So let's pray for them and uh, pray for our president and his family and all those that are, have been affected by the coronavirus. And let's remember to wear our mask and to practice social distancing and vote on November 3rd. Vote. If you don't wear a mask, you might not be around to vote. So wear your mask, practice social distancing so that we all can cast our vote. People have, our ancestors have lost their lives, some of them, so that we could express our desire to vote, so that we could have a right to vote. So let's vote. So long. We'll see you next time.